Hi, welcome, this is Clement Hetty Lector. In this video I will try to answer the question which clearance and creepage distances should I use in my PCB design? Now this is my personal interpretation of a super complex subject and so I may be wrong or mistaken on certain things. If you know better, please leave a comment. This video is based solely on own research and interpretation. All the data, numbers and values presented in this video are informative only and may not be used without verification by an established authority. Responsibility for failing compliance testing, damage to equipment, personal accidents or whatever is declined. Every once in a while when I work on a PCB design I run into the same problem. How much clearance should I use between the mains powered part and the low voltage part? A typical example would be a mains switching relay controlled by a microcontroller. When there is enough space on the board it is easy, just put as much distance as you can between the high voltage and the low voltage parts. But when you have to cram everything on a small surface things become difficult. Then the question arises, what are the minimum distances to ensure safety? You can simply not care if it is a one-off just for yourself, although I would not recommend this, but if you want to do things the right way, and even more so when your design is to be used by other people, then you must care. If you don't, your board may fail and dangerous situations may arise. The goal of clearances on PCBs is not so much to protect people from touching components connected to the mains, but to avoid unwanted currents between different parts of the circuit and especially to avoid leakage paths between parts that have different supply voltages, like a mains connected relay and its low voltage relay driver. If such a path forms, a strong current may develop and destroy one or more components. It may even cause a fire and you don't want to be responsible for that. Standards and norms have been developed to provide rules for such sorts of things. Good afternoon everybody. No. No. How about a beer, Norm? Hey, I'm high on life, coach. Of course, beer is my life. Unfortunately, the official ENIEC standard documents are not free. This is not a problem for companies, but it is for individuals. Strangely enough, on the internet you can find pirate versions of almost everything that is not free, but not these safety standards. Yet, they are something that every electronics engineer should know about. If you ask me, the IEC should be handing these things out for free to anyone interested, but they don't. When you search the internet for guidance, you will find many websites, web pages, and application notes about these safety standards, explaining the definitions used in them, but none of these give you clear numbers or examples or enough information for you to find out. This is because the safety standards don't give numbers, they only have a few tables and many, many rules and exceptions. And all these websites just put up the easy information to have an online presence. They don't want to give clear numbers because either they have no clue, or they are afraid to make a mistake, or because they want you to pay for it. Of course, you will say they cannot give clear numbers because every situation is different. But it isn't. I always find myself in the same situation. Separate mains from low voltage in a normal environment. And I guess this is true for many other people as well. In safety standard speak, uh, we want to know the clearance and creepage distances between the primary and the secondary circuits, and inside the primary circuit. To answer this question, we must first determine which standard to apply, then what its definitions are for our scenario, and under what conditions they apply. Step 1 is to find the right standard document. There are many, however, a quick search gives us a few that seem plausible. First, there is IEC 60065, Audio, Video and Similar Electronic Apparatus Safety Requirements. Second, there is IEC 60335-1, Household and Similar Electrical Appliances Safety. Then there is IEC 60950-1, Information Technology Equipment, also safety. Then there is IEC 62368-1, Audio, Video, Information and Communication Technology Equipment, Part 1, Safety Requirements. The first one, IEC 60065, covers things like TVs, electronic musical instruments, electronic games, light effects and alarm systems, sound and vision and multimedia devices. 
Luckily, it also says that the requirements of IEC 6950-1 may be used to meet the requirements for IEC 60065, and so we can forget about this one. IEC 6335 is a big one with more than 100 parts. Most of these are concerned with appliances like dishwashers and microwave ovens, but clocks and battery chargers, popular amateur electronic subjects, are covered too. However, the IEC 6335-2-26 clocks substandard does not apply to battery operated clocks, nor to clocks that do more than just displaying time, like switching something. Fully electronic clocks are covered by IEC 60065, which, as we saw, can be replaced by IEC 6950. The IEC 6335-2-29 battery charger substandard is even more complicated than clocks. Chargers are covered by so many substandards that it's easiest not to build the battery chargers at all. IEC 6335-2-82 applies to amusement machines, which include video games. It does, however, not apply to appliances intended exclusively for household use. Now this is a bit strange, as IEC 6335 is about the safety of household appliances. I can go on forever about the IEC 6335, but it seems that the things I tend to build, uh, to which IEC 6335 might apply, actually belong to IEC 6950. Then there is IEC 62368, Audio Video Information and Communication Technology Equipment, the fourth standard on our list. Well, this standard actually replaces both the 6950 and 6065, so let's concentrate on this one. An official copy of IEC 62368 can be bought for 910 Swiss francs if you only get parts 1 and 2. Uh, it costs 1085 francs for all three parts. There are pirate sites that offer PDF, but they ask for your credit card details, which I prefer to keep to myself. Therefore, I settled for a draft version that I found somewhere online. See the description below for the link. Now that we have the standard that probably applies to our board design, the next step is trying to understand what we want to know. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click or tap the bell button. Thank you for watching.